Uh, hello everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've actually been here before um, In previous videos I'm, I've been talking about me myself being a cruise virgin for want of a better expression And the journey I'm going through in sort of booking our first cruise up to embarkation and then the general experience So uh, I mentioned in a previous video about the price of Royal Caribbean drinks packages and the internet package and how I thought it was a bit excessive I thought it was a bit unfair to single them out so I'm going through an exercise now of comparing um, three of the major cruise lines and um, really what they offer uh, so that's what really what this video is all about so one of the more popular destinations from the UK and probably from around the world in fact is a cruise to the Norwegian fjords and it's on a lot of people's bucket list and it's certainly on mine and it's one I will be doing before too long I would imagine so um, what I've done is I've compared three of the major cruise lines on a sort of seven eight day cruise up to the Norwegian fjords um, a round trip from Southampton in the UK and um, the results are maybe not surprising but um, it, they're definitely worth looking at so I'm looking at three cruise lines in this video, um, Royal Caribbean and, the, and their ship the Anthem of the Seas. I'm looking at Princess Cruises and the Sky Princess and I'm also looking at Iona from P&O Cruises and they all offer a very similar um, itinerary from Southampton. Um, Royal Caribbean is seven days piano is seven days but sky is actually eight days for some reason i'm not quite sure why but so i'm not comparing apples exactly with apples but they're near enough and and the um, places they visit are all very similar so in that respect i think it's a fair comparison to make so as you can see from the uh, the table on this on the um, video here it's um there is a, a bit of a bit of a band in pricing p and o are coming out uh, the cheapest for the base price with Princess Next and then quite a step up to Royal Caribbean and Anthem of the Seas and as I said previously the itineraries are all very similar now this is not a dig at Royal Caribbean saying they're expensive it's um every cruise line is different they all offer different experiences so cheaper is not necessarily best and more expensive is not necessarily the best either so uh, i think you need to find a cruise line that suits your personality your particular wants and needs and uh, that's one of the exercises i've gone through and i've been devouring videos on youtube and i think it's given me a good feel for for the sort of ship i, I like to be on and um the sort of experience i want to have on my first cruise so as you can see the prices do vary um, the experiences will be different but um, and all the cabins will be different so it, it, you need to do your own research and say okay I, I like the look of Royal Caribbean it might be a little bit more but um, that's the ship I think suits me conversely you might think hold on P&O that's a good price um, they're going to the same places it can't be that different surely maybe p and is the one for me um, my particular choice is going to be Princess I'm Johnny in the middle as they say but um, I've chosen Princess for our first cruise because I think it's not too formal but it's got a level of formality which I think we're going to quite enjoy it's nice to get dressed up for dinner and things like that now and again whereas probably P&O and Royal Caribbean are probably a bit more informal but um, my wife and I are probably quite attracted to the, the formality of a Princess cruise but everyone's different and everyone's wants and needs are going to be different so that's um that's quite an interesting comparison on the prices there and quite a range of prices i'm going to move on now to the next slide and this is where it uh, really does change around a bit when i introduce a drinks package and an internet package most people are going to go for a balcony cabin most people will choose a drinks package and most people will want internet when they're away on holiday so i think it's a again it's a generalized um comparison but uh, it fits a lot of people's needs let's move on to the next slide so as you can see from this slide the um the prices have obviously ramped up for all three um, cruise lines by adding the drinks package and the wi-fi and the gap between sky princess and P&O has closed considerably 
It's about £80 more now for the Princess Cruise, and bear in mind you're getting an extra day anyway on that, so that's um, probably looking to be quite a good quite a good um, deal, really. Um, however, there is a caveat with that, because Princess are currently offering a 50% deal on their drinks and internet, so it's normally £50 a day, and it's currently £25 a day, so I suppose if, really, if, um, if you're sort of comparing their normal prices, that they would be sort of another £200 per person. However, what is significant is the the gap from Royal Caribbean to Princess has opened up considerably, and it's now sort of £510 more for a seven-night cruise to the to the fjords. But as I've said previously, it's not just it's not just down to price. I think Princess is going to suit us, but it might not suit you. So Royal Caribbean might be your choice, even if you might are paying a little bit more. And it's probably got some things on the out from the seas that you'll find sort of quite attractive, like dodgems and, and those sort of things. But um, that doesn't necessarily appeal to me, and it won't appeal to everyone, but there will be a certain sector of people that it does appeal to. So I think it's been an interesting exercise to compare the, the three different cruise lines, going to roughly the same place, roughly the same time, and then bundling in the, the drinks and the Wi-Fi and, and just seeing how they all come out. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this and found it informative and uh, please subscribe to my channel because more videos will be coming out and uh, in just over a week's time we'll, my wife and I will be actually boarding and uh, then I'll be doing some videos from the Sky Princess. So in summary I think it's, it's important to remember that the cheapest option is not necessarily the best option. And conversely, the most expensive option doesn't necessarily mean it will provide the best experience for you. You may love a particular cruise line or even a particular ship and you're willing to pay a little bit more for that for that experience. Remember, all these different cruise lines and different ships will provide different experiences. They'll have different uh, facilities, uh, different restaurants, and so, and even the, the cabin sort of layouts are going to be different. So if you find a, a ship you love and a cruise line you love, you may pay a little bit more for that. You may pay a little bit less for that as it happens. But it's it's vitally important to do your research and find out which is the right cruise line and which is the right ship for you. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, there will be more videos coming out soon. In just over a week, my wife and I will be boarding the Sky Princess and going off to Norway and Denmark. And um, looking forward to that immensely. And I'll be pushing out some more videos um during that week away. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Cheers.